Atrial fibrillation is one of the most common heart arrhythmias affecting millions of patients in the U.S. alone. It is a rapid, irregular heart rhythm originating in the atrial upper chambers of the heart. It commonly causes palpitations and fatigue as well as greatly increases the risk of stroke. While the condition was once considered benign, it is now known to increase the risk of heart failure, stroke, hospitalization, and death. If you look at uh, survival data from patients, from large registries of patients with atrial fibrillation, there is an, an actual increase in patients' mortality um, due to the atrial fibrillation. Generally speaking, it's by virtue of one of two mechanisms. One would be congestive heart failure, the other one is uh, stroke. In terms of symptoms associated with atrial fibrillation, a lot of times we'll see fatigue, chest pain, shortness of breath, palpitations, congestive heart failure, and occasionally lightheadedness or even syncope. Two general methods are used to restore normal sinus rhythm. Cardioversion is more effective at restoring rhythm. However, maintaining requires antiarrhythmic drugs in patients with persistent atrial fibrillation. The drugs are only 50 to 60 percent effective in accomplishing this task, and patients are exposed to side effects including proarrhythmic effects. In the vast majority of cases, the shock of the defibrillator will allow the heart to regain control of its own rhythm. However, the risk of clots breaking loose and causing stroke is high in absence of proper anticoagulation. Establishing sinus rhythm at one point in time is generally not the problem. It's maintaining over a long period of time, and it's difficult to maintain even despite the antiarrhythmic medications. An ablation is a procedure designed to use energy to disrupt or eliminate the faulty electrical pathways that cause abnormal heart rhythms. But unlike cardioversion, the electrical stimulus is delivered via RF, radio frequency, in very isolated areas responsible for the condition. The procedure is performed without open chest surgery. After anesthesia, the cardiologist gains access through a vein. During the procedure, four to eight catheters are inserted into different veins and threaded through the blood vessels to different locations in the heart. Next, intracardiac echo integration is used to verify proper catheter positioning and identify critical structures. Then, a transeptal puncture, TSP, is used to access the left atrial chamber. The cardiologist then isolates pulmonary veins using 3D mapping and treats muscles surrounding four veins using RF. RF destroys or ablates the hot spots and interrupts the triggers for the heart arrhythmia. The procedure lasts four to nine hours. No matter how you look at it, um, when directly compared to antiarrhythmics, ablation is superior. Just by virtue of, of restoring sinus rhythm in those patients and maintaining it, you're changing their life. I had been doing the cardioversion every three to four weeks. And with the ablation process, uh, that stopped immediately and that was it.